about this pedal board that I'm just over the moon about. All right, so first of all, all guitar players know that it's not only important how your gear sounds, but how it looks. So, exactly. I mean, we have to have as colorful as, I will, as possible. I will repeat it. Yeah. If you can't play the part, look the part. Exactly. Yes. So um, it's actually relatively simple. I, being a metal guy, I have three different overdrives on my board, um, <laughs> which is terribly redundant. And yes, they're mostly set up to sound the same, but it, the, the inner guitar player in me is very happy. Uh, but we start off super simple with the Boss TU3 tuner. Uh, you have to have that. Very important. I mean, not like the singer is going to ever sing in tune anyway, but just have fun. Then we move on to the JHS Morning Glory. I use it as a very mild overdrive, more kind of like a clean boost. <laughs> I mean, you get a little that bit term it. being relative in this case. Yes, very yeah. relative. Yeah. Okay. This is not like a country coon boost. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. <laughs> then I move over to the Keeley Aria, which is a two-in-one pedal. Um, on the right side, it has a compressor, which I'm typically not a big fan of a compressor, just because I like to have a lot of dynamics when I'm playing. Right. From being able to work my volume knob, especially having just a one channel amp, one volume knob, that's, that's sometimes how I get my cleans. Um, but also, it, uh, some of the dynamics just totally aren't the same. But that being said, if I'm doing like my Atosa Nabasi hammer on from nowhere, it makes it Gracious way easier. Sakes. Um, yeah, it makes it way easier because, of course, a compressor is going to make each note louder, so you have to use less force when just hammering on from nowhere. You still get a strong note, right? Um, it also has an overdrive built into the other side, which I kind of have set to a darker, relatively smoother overdrive. <laughs> Nothing really too gainy there, but uh, it works well. Um, it does also have a higher gain setting on it, but I would set to the you know low okay. gain right now. We move over to the most '80s looking pedal I have on the that board. That is super '80s. I know nothing more than I mean a hot pink colored pedal with a DeLorean on it. We got we got a lot going on there, but it's just meant to be an overdrive slash distortion pedal that mimics more of a JCM 800 game. Okay. Um, so I have this set up to be higher than to throw you in. Now we are getting somewhere. People. Yes. And what I'll do, lead playing, um, if I'm playing over something more metal, is I'll have the hot pink drive on, and then I'll usually throw on the morning glory just for all this. <laughs> I mean, it sounds really good, super touch responsive, your harmonics, or pick harmonics are super easy to get, any, any harmonic really. Um, after that, I got the chorus thrown in. I have it after my overdrive pedals and kind of at the top of the pedal board, so if I ever wanted to, I could run the overdrive pedals into the front of the amp and my time-based effects and my modulation in the effects loop of an amp. I don't have an effects loop in this right now, so it's just in the front of it, but I mean, it's your favorite chorus tone. <laughs> very jangly sounding. What I like about this one is it's based off uh, an old Aria chorus instead of an old Boss uh, CE1 okay. or CE2, um, which it's just a little spankier sounding than like a, a Boss would be. And this also doubles as a vibrato pedal. You can set it um, higher, higher speeds and change the wave shape, but I always just use it for my, you know, sound. And then this whole time I've had this Dryman Volante on, which is a tape or drum uh, delay pedal with a built-in spring reverb. The reverb alone is why I bought this okay. pedal, because it's got like the best reverb uh, I've ever heard from a pedal. And I got my delay going. But I mean, 
so it just adds a lot of depth to the sound and keeps it from just being. I mean, it just makes it sound that much better. I have deliberately stayed away from two brands on this board, JHS and Strymon, because I can't afford to like them. But you are changing my mind. You can't afford not to like them. <laughs> <laughs> we have to talk about this purple amp head. Now. All right. So, like I said, building amps started for my dad and I when I was like 16, and I needed, yeah, 15, 16, and I was doing an electronics course in school. Okay. And my dad has a Votech degree in electronics himself, so he, he knows this stuff pretty well. I see. And we're like, we're both guitar players. What would be funner than building your own amp, right? Mm -hmm. And we started to look online at certain kits, and we found a website called Tube Depot, and they had a Marshall JTM45 Bill Jones kit. So it came with everything, pre-drilled chassis, transformers, all the capacitors, resistors, the turret board, um, the wiring. It was everything, right. except the cabinet. We had to build our own cabinet. Oh. Um, and that's what we did uh, for that year of electronics and it just totally opened up the door for us because like whoa we can we can really do this this like isn't it, it's it's difficult but it's not right? right if you know what you're doing it's like anything else if you know what you're doing you can do it um so that got the wheels turning and we built another amp this time more of our own design uh, based off of like an old train rack amplifier okay um and with that build, we didn't buy a kit. This time, it's like, okay, we're going to do it ourselves. Oh right? my. So we got a couple of computer programs, like a pad to pad which is basically an electronic circuit board okay. software, which we don't use circuit board in this. We use what's called turret board. Okay. So it's basically a, a rigid board that you drill holes into, mm -hmm. pound in metal turrets, and then that's what you wire the computers sure. to, the resistors okay. and capacitors. And we, with that whole computer program, we wired up what it would look like on the inside so that we could print out a template, lay it over this board, and drill all the holes perfectly where they needed oh, to go. sure. And we also bought an undrilled chassis, and we got just some, like, AutoCAD software, mm -hmm. and we drew up, like, um, tube sockets and how we would all drill it out and drill out the aluminum chassis, and that's what we did. And we even went, uh, shout out to Troy Zoller at Vanway Trill Free. Um, he does like these nameplates and everything. Oh, so, okay. And, yeah, so uh, in our AutoCAD software, we always, you know, we drew up that as well, and it, it was a lot of fun, because then it's like, okay, we're really building an amp now, right? Sure. We're not getting a pre-made kit, like we're putting all this work right. into it. Um, and then that amp was cool, but we still wanted more, right? And this science project got out of hand quickly. It did, and yeah. you know, it's a little bit expensive. <laughs> 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 Um, so what we did is my dad wanted to build um, another amp, and this time we wanted to go like true plexi style. Okay. And he had more money than I did, and so you know he was starting off his build before I did, and he went full sixty-eight uh, plexi circuit, so like lay down transformer and you know a couple other part tweaks. But I want you know started watching him build an amp, and it's like, well, I got to do it. <laughs> so I got the money up to. Uh, build it and I made a couple of different tweaks and different decisions than he did on his plexi which I went 71 plexi okay uh, so we got an upright transformer um, among a couple of other things uh, one of the not to geek out is the how we have the negative feedback wired in this tune of 47k to the 8 ohm tap oh wow up. so I, I don't worry it about it. We've been geeking out for like okay. 10 solid minutes here, and they're just going to have to pretend they know what we're talking uh, about. At Johnny, this point. just not. <laughs> okay, we're good. We could, we don't have time to have a whole discussion <laughs> of the history of Marshall, for right. example. We've mentioned JTM 45, yep. JTM 800, and Plexi's already. We just don't have, it's a Marshall clone is what it is, yes, ladies and gentlemen. Exactly. Yeah. So I ended up building this amp, and when I got done, played that first note on it. Right. We're like, holy cow. Did it sound like that, what you Except just did? Except better, because I have it through a 412 cab. At home, oh, a okay. Was cab. it through a... Now this, at a high enough volume, will overdrive itself. Was your board plugged into it? 
my board was not. At okay. Um, and that's a, another thing I need to mention is Marshall Plaxis are non-master volume amps. Okay. So that means you get all your volume and all your gain by turning up your loudness one. Uh-huh. That's why they are ear-piercingly bright. I see. Ear-piercingly okay. loud. And that's why if you have neighbors, you will have cops at your door. Right. Um, we put a master volume in this like oh. the JCM 100. So okay. that's what allows me to be able to get this level gain with, uh, I mean. Oh, the board is plumb off. Yeah, I only got um, the Volante on. For okay. And, reverb. and I actually have my uh, gain rolled down to about seven. If okay. I go to 10. That is pure two magic right there, kids. So an overdrive. Very quickly, we should mention we are playing you, Jacob, not we, is playing his mark on plexi style head through the Haggerty's uh, PRS Tremonti cab, correct? Yeah. Is it a 2 by 12 This is a 1 by 12 actually. A 1 by 12 But it's a really good, it's closed back, which you like. It keeps the bass punchy, okay. especially if you're playing like metal. And they have a Celestion Vintage 30 in here, um, oh, which yeah. is, of course, a great speaker. Nothing wrong with that. Use it. Sure. Everyone from like Steve Stevens to Steve Vai have used a Vintage 30, right? So, right. Um, really happy with the sound. It's a bit more of a mid-range focused speaker, and being a 112 cab, we got a little bit better the sound. But right. I, I hope it, I, it's coming through. And it is for sale here at the store. The cab, not the amp. The, <laughs> correct, <laughs> the cab. That's what Good. I meant. And if, if you were to sell the cab, then you could probably order another one here. Absolutely. Did we mention that you work here? I don't know if we did or not. But he works here. I do. Yeah, so you can come see him watching what he's about to do. I We're pretty close to done, aren't we? Yeah. Okay. Um, don't forget my sponsorship with Trask Hay LLC, uh, 5150858, large round and square bale. Even despite the drought, they're going to have a few. John Petrucci says, change your strength. Jacob Markin, give her help, buddy. All right. <laughs>